I just got back from Cuba. I visited the Jewish community there because the JWRP has a special donor whose grandparents escaped during the war when Cuba opened up their doors. And many Jews ended up there because when America and Canada and other countries were shutting Jews out, Cuba in the 1930s said, come. At one point, there were 23,000 Jews in Cuba. Now, when the revolution happened in the 1950s, most fled, most tried to get to America. But some stayed, some were caught, and I'm visiting the community which has about 1,400 Jews. Some are descended from those Jews who came over, and some joined the Jewish people. It was almost like finding a lost tribe. I have to tell you, it was really a profound experience for me. Here I was speaking to the community. There were about 150 people there. And before my talk began, they all stood up and they sang the Cuban national anthem. And then they started singing Hatikva. They're singing Hatikva, the Israeli national anthem. Children wearing kippot, teenagers, adults, elderly, singing a tikvah in Havana, Cuba. Here they are, cut off from the world, basically no access to internet, and living through communist Cuba, trying to survive, trying to connect to their Judaism and to Israel, against all odds. There are many communities who have done tremendous uh, work for them and tried to support them, whether it's funding or bringing medicines or supplies. But why were we there? We were bringing Jewish wisdom, the Torah. And when I was speaking, I have never had this experience before. I didn't want to stop. There was so much I wanted to share with them. And they were literally, even the teenagers, on the edge of their seats. They said they've never heard anything like this. And they've never heard it shared in this way. And they wanted more. I met with the 10 women who are going to be coming in May of 2016 with the JWRP. And I realized they have no idea what they're about to experience. I played for them uh, a video of our past women's trip which showed them a little bit of the life and emotion and experience that they're about to have. They were elated, shocked, and very moved. More than one was crying. I'm looking forward to bringing them to Israel. I'm very grateful to our sponsor, who's not only allowing this to happen and making sure it happens, but making sure that they have this experience with dignity. A lawyer makes $14 a month in Cuba. So we're providing spending money for them too so that they can be like the other women on the trip to be able to go out to buy souvenirs. I'll let you know what happens. That's one trip I'm really looking forward to. I'm Lori, almost live.